Hello, it's Saturday the 22nd of January 2022, episode 177 of the so-called Notcast. Uh, the observant of you will have already read my t-shirt and work out that today I'm going to be talking about New Order's 10th and today final studio album released in September 2015. The album is called Music Complete. Uh, there are also five live albums uh, and I think six singles for me to talk about and a whole bunch of live shows. Um, so hopefully this one will be uh, fairly straightforward. Um, we start with obviously New Order uh, reforming of sorts in 2011 uh, as a new five-piece version of the band with um, the release of the uh, the Total compilation album which I mentioned on my last New Order episode four months ago. It seems less than four months ago. The first UK show the band played um, with the new lineup at the London Troxy, which is a Victorian theatre with a 1,600 capacity. Haven't been there very often. I think I've only been to two or three shows there. Uh, New Order was the first one I saw. Uh, John Carpenter on the 31st of October 2016 was probably the last, actually. And New Order at the Troxy was released as a double CD that's available from a website called Live Here Now. Um, absolutely love this show. It was, um, I, I really missed seeing New Order, actually, and, and there's something about seeing them that's, that's quite euphoric for me, almost like seeing a, you know, like a wave of joy moving through thousands of people. It's certainly what I felt at my first New Order show at Manchester in 1998, and it's what I felt at my last New Order show to date, which was at the O2 Arena a couple of months ago uh, with Snuffy, and it has lovely lovely feeling is just to be in a room with lights and discos and lasers and sounds and music and dancing and just having a lovely time. There is something about New Order shows that I really, really enjoy. Uh, this five-piece version of New Order with uh, Julian returning on keyboards and guitar and Tom Chapman from Bad Lieutenant on bass is, in, in my opinion, um, a very solid, stable New Order live lineup. Now, New Order as a four-piece um, were always a little bit more unpredictable. The highs were higher, but the lower, the lows were definitely really low. They were an unpredictable act, and they could be amazing, and they could be awful, sometimes in the same song, uh, definitely in the same night, and you could go from seeing them play one of the best shows you've ever seen one day to the next gig you see being pretty much one of the worst. Um, when I saw them in 1998, the show at Reading Festival was it's still in my top five shows of all time. The next time I saw them at Manchester Evening News Arena, which was three or four months later, uh, is probably one of my least enjoyable New Order shows uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and I don't know why. Um, but New Order now, as a live act, are a lot more reliable. They're a lot more dependable. Uh, the critics would call them safe, but I prefer to think of it as being less erratic, which is actually a really, really good thing, is to you know have your act together and be able to deliver it. So the first show I saw by the new lineup was at the London Troxy in 2011. That was the first live album, the first official contemporary live album that had been officially released by the band. In 2012, New Order started touring again on a more determined basis. They played uh, Europe, America, um, loads of places all over the world lots of summer festivals um that which which resulted in a couple of of, of releases uh the first one the first official um, well the second official new order live album is new order live at best of all on the 8th of september 2012 this followed up from the the cure album that was recorded at best of all at the previous year's festival uh where the profits from the cd goes to the isle of Wight youth trust um, and it's a slightly truncated version of the band's headline show. Runs about 80 minutes, the CD. And it's got a slightly different track list to the, um, the the Live at the Troxy set. I think it's got Here to Stay in it. I think it's got Crafty in there. Um, it's got Transmission, for example. But it was the first kind of New Order live album that was readily available as a contemporary release in the shops. And I think part of the reason for that was obviously the band were, were having disagreements and frank exchanges of uh, views with their former bass player. And of course, if you don't need the former bass player's permission to release a live album, that makes it considerably easier if the former bass player may or may not be blocking any, any releases which you're making. Uh, not criticising anybody here, I'm trying to walk the narrow path between both, both camps there. Um, it's a good live album. Not amazing, a pretty good one. Now, the band also played a lot of summer festivals. 
that year. Um, so I'm just showing you the promo version of the, the, the festival release, uh, which is watermarked and has a different card sleeve cover on it. This is the retail version of it. It was never released on vinyl. Otherwise, I would have it on vinyl because, of course, I, would. I don't think there's anything officially released by New Order. I haven't got on vinyl in some form. Um, and there's a mm, very bright thing. It kind of captures the, the flavour of the New Order experience. They're a, a kind of a kind of like a celebration of, of stuff going on. Uh, there's the promo CD and there's the, the actual CD. Um, there's also, and these are vanishingly rare now, a bootleg DVD of New Order live at the In Music Festival in uh, Croatia, uh, which features um, a TV broadcast of an 80 minute headline show. Yes, I bought it. Um, this was, I think, released in Brazil. Um, it's a good show, not an amazing show, but it was a an unofficial you order bootleg lives dvd and of course i bought it because they weren't releasing any studio albums at the time uh, the band toured on a very constant basis played lots of shows um rotated the set list around i think they played they played hyde park in london which was the first time i missed them playing london in a long time because i didn't want to pay 80 pounds to see them play for 40 minutes supporting the specials and blur at hyde park in the middle of the afternoon if I was going to pay £8 to see New Order, I wanted a full-length show. And to be honest, New Order should be headlining. Blur should be licking their boots. And um, the fact that New Order was supporting the special and, and Blur just felt all wrong to me. It should have been the other way around. New Order should be headlining. They're bloody good enough. Um, they're better than the specials and better than Blur, by the way, in my opinion. Um, we had a, an unusual release in 2015, early 2015, uh, when, while the band were in the midst of you know, constant touring. Um, and it is this, St. Anthony, um, by an ode to Anthony H. Wilson, by the poet Mike Gary and Joe Duddle. This is effectively, in my opinion, to all intents and purposes, a New Order single, although it doesn't feel like it. So it is a, a poem read by Mike Gary which is an alphabetical list of all the greatest things about Manchester. Um, and the video features every member of the order apart from Peter Hook. I think this is a photograph of Tony Wilson wearing an elephant's head on his face. Um, and the music ma music backing on this is, is to all, is to, it's a practical 99% recreation of Your Silent Face uh, from the Power, Corruption and Lies album. So um, you've got an instrumental remix, you've got the original instrumental, you've got um, the and Andrew, Andy Weatherall remix, and an Andy Weatherall remix instrumental. Now, the great thing about that is, effectively, what that means you've got an Andy Weatherall remix of New Order's Your Silent Face, both as a poem with Mike Gary reading and as an instrumental on its own. Um, probably difficult to get these days, but it is available online. I think it's a lovely track. I wish... Um, I sometimes I think it maybe should be played in between encores, actually, with the video on the screen. But uh, that, of course, would make a five-minute gap between the band coming on and coming off. But uh, if you haven't seen it or heard it, this is a fantastic New Order related track. I file it in with my New Order releases. Um, and so 2015 was a very, very busy year for the band. And it saw the release of, for the first time, um, their first post Peter Hook material. The first single that was released came out in September 2015. Uh, here's the coloured vinyl 12 inch. Uh, still in it, I think this one's still in its shrink wrap of Restless, uh, which has uh, got remixes by Andrew Weatherall and Agoria, and uh, it's got an extended mix on there as well of, of Restless. Um, there is a CD single, uh, and the CD single uh, came inside a slipcase. Uh, well, more correctly, if you're on the band's mailing list, you've got a slipcase to put your CD singles that went alongside the Music Complete album. Restless is a, a pretty good New Order track. It's perhaps not as obviously poppy as some of the other stuff, but I think it was a good, bold choice to, to, to start the um, the period with. The uh, There's the Restless CD single, uh, which has... Um, another couple of remixes on there there were some download only remixes there were some remixes i think they were only released on cassette in japan you know there were some unusual remix versions and variations of restless as a debut single you didn't necessarily listen to it and go that's an amazing new order comeback single i think it was quite pointed actually the lyrics seem to be about greed 
Um, whereas things, you know, how much do you need? I want a girlfriend that's prettier than a star. I want a big car and I want all the respect I can get. And if you're feeling particularly uh, uh, astute, you can probably go, that's probably a lyric about the band's former bass player. But of course, it's a little bit subtler than that. It's not so pointed. Um, Restless is a good song. They play it live, but it never rips the roof off. It's kind of a you know a fantastic mid-place, new order track. Very reminiscent of things like 1963. A song that's more appreciated uh, than it is loved. And as I've said, if you're on the band's mailing list, you've got a slipcase for your CD singles here. Uh, so you can put the Music Complete singles in there. On, on September the 25th, the band released their 10th studio album, Music Complete. And to promote it, they played a one-off show at the BBC Sixes studio in Maida Vale. Uh, Maida Vale was the room where the Beatles did a lot of their radio sessions. I think Led Zeppelin did some of their radio sessions there. It's an important room, um, and it's one that you, you only get into if you win a competition. Um, I was very, very lucky. Um, I entered the competition to see New Order at Maida Vale. I wasn't successful, but a friend of mine was. He dropped out the night before. He sent me the tickets, and myself and Stuart went along to see New Order in Maida Vale to play their first show in about a year, debuting a lot of songs off Music Complete. I think they played four or five songs which um, they hadn't played before, uh, Restless, uh, Tutti Frutti, maybe People on the High Line, Singularity, Plastic, those type of songs. Um, and there were about 150 people there who were contest winners. Now, if you watch the, the video, and I'll post a link to the video on YouTube, uh, there are some guys that are going, this crowd is dead. How come nobody's bouncing up and down like a standard New Order gig? Well, the reason is the show started at 11 o'clock on a Friday morning. It was a dry room. Nobody had drunk anything. And nobody was on anything stronger than a Diet Pepsi or a Pepsi Max. There were 150 people in the room. We were surrounded by cameras and it just wasn't conducive to kicking off a New Order style mosh pit that you might have got in the 80s with loads of guys jumping up and down, pilled up and necking all manner of eats. It wasn't that type of crowd. It was 11 o'clock on a fucking Friday morning, guys, at a TV studio. It's not a typical gig. Don't think that it is. It was a fantastic experience. So I was uh, pretty much second row and I was uh, in between Phil and Bernard. And watching the band up close like that, sometimes you get used to seeing New Order from a distance and New Order not being a band that are real. And then, you know, I saw like, you know, the five people. I saw how they, they worked, how they interacted how they moved, the body language, the gestures, you know, the way the band operates in, which you don't get a chance to see that when you're in a massive room seeing them play to 20,000 people. When you get in to see them play to 200 people, then you get to really appreciate that there's there's two new orders. There's the new order that has, you know, lots of films and plays massive rooms, and there's the five people banging out a racket. And I watched the five people banging out a racket version of new order. It's a fantastic gig, um, and I'm very, very lucky to have seen one of my very favourite bands play in the same room as the Beatles and Led Zeppelin played in that legendary room in that suburb in London. I uh, also saw John Grant there in 2018. Um, a phenomenal experience. You know, I, I make no bones about it. I know I'm a lucky bastard. Um, it takes some effort, but I know that I've been very, very lucky with those experiences. By the way, Jeff Bezos, in charge of Amazon, was at the show. He was on the balcony. And I kind of looked up at one point and went, oh, it looks like that guy from Amazon. He looks like a James Bond bad guy. Then forgot all about it. And it was only when there was a shot of him dancing later on on the BBC broadcast. I was like, that's definitely the guy from Amazon. He owes me a lot of money. Nonetheless, Music Complete was released. Um, and it was the band's first album in 10 years. Now, we had Lost Sirens that was released in 2013. Uh, Lost Sirens is an outtakes album. It was never finished. Uh, so the version of it that was released was the version that was effectively, you know, frozen in amber on the day that Hooky left the band. Um, although I, I love Lost Sirens, I think it's got a lot of really good things to, to recommend it. Um, it came out in a number of formats. Uh, the most obvious one was, of course, the CD. Um, and here is the, the retail CD version of Music Complete that I, I got on the day. Um, and I also bought, by the way the limited edition vinyl box set of uh, Music Complete. Uh, and here it is. Um, this version I bought 
from the band's web store. It was, I'm not going to lie, expensive. Um, and it, it's an unusual package. Let's go and have a look in here and see what there is because there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Now, 200 copies of this came with a signed 12-inch art print that was signed by all the members of the group. So let's open the box and see if I'm one of those lucky bastards. Um, now, I already know the answer to that. You don't. So let, let's have a look and see what there is. So let's take the... The, the bizarrely, um, you know, stapled cardboard box off the front of Music Complete. And uh, lo and behold, yes, I have one of the 12 inch art prints for Music Complete signed by every member of the band. And I ha can confirm that uh, that's Gillian's signature there. That looks like Tom. Um, I think that's Phil. I think that's Steve and I think that's Bernard. I have seen, yeah, I've got a Bernard autograph on another item. So it looks like that. Now this was... They didn't tell people that had ordered which version they'd got. You only knew it when you opened it. Uh, and there was also this uh, this art card, well, more correctly, this this kind of in, internal kind of thing that told you what was on it. So you've got the version of the album, Music Complete, uh, on, on a double LP here. Standard retail double LP. Um, I've never had the need to play the vinyl of this, so I never have. Um, you also got, I think, six... Uh, 12 inch singles that you couldn't get anywhere else it contained an extended version of the album so there were 11 previously un unavailable and hard to get um, versions of the songs extended mixes that had been created during the recording of the album so you had 11 new new order extended mixes on I think 6 12 inches so this is Restless and Singularity on the first 12 inch here we had on the second 12 inch here we had plastic and tutti frutti uh, again these played at 45 they were all delivered sealed now i never opened the seals because there was also a download version of them. Um, you had the uh, the people on the high line and stray dog extended mix there on that version you had academic and nothing but a fall on here uh, unlearn this hatred and the game on there and then the last one was a single solid 12 which with a track called superheated an extended mix of superheated and all of those were available as downloads oh look uh, if you you have really great eyesight you can see my address let's not look in there uh, but you also had uh, a download card and some stickers uh, this is a sticker for me at records i have one of these on my dvd player because it's a fucking awesome sticker that's the uh, the music complete artwork, and here is the the download of the album, including the uh, the extended mixes. I downloaded them, I listened to them. I never felt the need to open the vinyl, but I just felt the need to to really just listen to the extended mixes. And the extended mixes that are on the album are fantastic. They were also, in fact, they're so good um, they deserved a, a proper. Uh, wider release which they got in the middle of 2016 as complete music a double cd here um, not available on, on, on vinyl by the way of the extended versions of the album so you kind of needed to get both music complete and complete music to get the idea of, of what the album really really was um, I think Complete Music is a fantastic New Order album. It very clearly sounds like a band that's had a different lineup. So when you listen to a band that's had a, lot, a major lineup change, you know, Depeche Mode losing Alan Wilder, uh, The Cure um, not having Boris and Pearl in them, um, New Order not having Peter Hook, you kind of go, it's going to be different. It's going to sound different. And there are parts of Music Complete that really, really remind me of the Bad Lieutenant album. Um, it's lacking, and it's not necessarily a lack, it's just a different melodic approach from the bass player. Peter Hook's bass is, is very kind of like tuned through a certain set of pedals, through a certain sound. Guy plugs in, you know it's him. At the moment he starts playing, you know that's him. Tom Chapman is a very different bass player. Uh, so, for example, songs like People on the High Line, Tutti Frutti, they've got a different melodic approach to the bass, a different sound a different feel and it adds something different to the band's sound and so the idea that people would have is that you know everyone in the band apart from Berna just does as they're paid to do and does as they're told you listen to Tom's playing and you kind of go that's not really the case because if it was around doing what they were told to do um then surely someone would again you need to sound more like Peter Hook or someone would go you need to do this or you need to do that 
Um, now, the Republic album, as, as I think I've mentioned, uh, chunks of it were largely written, composed and played by Bernard. And so the musical parts that were built by Stephen, Gillian and Peter were sometimes edited out and replaced. Um, for Music Complete, it feels a lot more like a more equal kind of organisation with a more equal footing, I think, than previously. Um, there are, you know, like everybody that listens to Music Complete, there are bits where you listen to it and you go, I can hear an imaginary Peter Hook bass line. There are parts of the song where you go, oh, I put a, a, a hooky style bass solo would, would fit right in here. But then that's not what happens. Tom delivers a different bass sound and it's just as good. It's just completely different. Um, and it's really interesting to hear the change in the chemistry that the band have. It's the same kind of change in chemistry that you'll hear in, in uh, later Depeche Mode, when, when Alan's uh, melodic and atmospheric approach isn't present in the band, or, or perhaps when after Carl Bartos left Kraftwerk, you know, it's not their stuff isn't so bouncy. It doesn't have that kind of rampant bass line and that, that kind of thundering rhythm, um, which you expect to get with Carl Bartos. I think Music Complete, is a really good New Order album. It is, uh, and it sounds exactly like what it is, which is it sounds like um, New Order after Peter Hook left. Uh, it really does. And you can really feel the, the kind of warm, elegant textures of the synth lines from Gillian as well. Gillian's presence is all over this album, uh, and it hasn't really been on. Uh, it was maybe on a little bit of Get Ready. It wasn't on Waiting for the Sirens Call. It was a little bit on Republic because of the you know the band's working methods at the time. I really missed her warm, elegant, precise synth lines that are just the right side of Tasteful. And I don't mean that in a, a kind of like bland Coldplay way. It's just, you know, the power of silence is just as important as the power of noise. And um, Gillian's keyboards are perfect on this album there are some fantastic synth lines on here and that's why lots of people have said this album is the best new order album since technique for the record they're almost definitely right i think i agree with them i have a very soft spot for every new order album but i really really love music complete um and so the band went on tour um they promoted the album with lots and lots of live shows so new order turned into a, a compelling live proposition at this point, as I said, they'd become better at playing live, uh, they become more dependable and more reliable. And so they played a lot of live shows and they were all pretty damn good, actually. And they weren't as predictable as you might expect them to be. Uh, this, they did a second single release from the album. Uh, this one was Tutti Frutti, uh, which is it's basically a fantastic Italian house piano classic. Um, it sounds like it was uh, you know, a song that was recorded in 1992 and somehow stayed in a box until 2015. Um, it's the type of thing that you would have heard in a nightclub in 1992. Now, there's a, there's a debate. Not necessarily a debate. When when bands get older and when bands age and when bands change, the question is, well, at what point do they cease evolving? So, for example, ACDC ceased evolving the moment that Bon Scott started doing smutty lyrics about she's got the biggest balls of them all. Um, and when Iron Maiden, I think they, they probably, you know, they, they honed their, their template the very second Bruce Dickinson yelled and screamed at the beginning of The Number of the Beast. New Order managed to kind of like peak their evolution probably sometime in 1991 even though they didn't exist in 1991 and and came out with songs like this that, that were effectively songs that lost classics you listen to it and you go that is the summer of 1992 and that's not necessarily a criticism i've been watching a lot of top of the pops on british television uh, recently repeats from 1992 on friday nights and some of those songs sound just like this so uh, Tootsie Fruity has a CD single release which had an extended mix, a different extended mix to the version that's on the album, a Hot Chip remix, a Crazy Days remix, a Richie Ahmed remix and a Hello Halo mix. I have no memory of any of those remixes. There was also a 12 inch. This 12 inch came on coloured vinyl. Again, never opened it. I just downloaded the stuff that's in there. Um, it features the extended 12 inch mix and uh, the Tootsie Fruity hot chip re remix uh, the vinyl only 12 inch vinyl version of the hot chip remix of tutti frutti there um, as i said before the band started touring they played a lot of live shows and they um they released another live album um their their second uh or third fourth third with this lineup recorded at the brixton academy 
on the 17th, I think, of November 2015, um, which I'll get to once I've finished talking about the singles from the album. But just so you know, there are two things that are happening simultaneously. Uh, the band released their third single from the album. It's called Singularity. And Singularity is fantastic. Um, it's one of my, my very favourite New Order tracks, actually. Uh, it's got a bass line that reminds me very much of, of uh, Joy Division's novelty. Um, again, it comes on coloured vinyl. Features remixed by Errol Alkin, uh, J.S. Zeiter and Mark Reader, who is not me. Although sometimes people mistake me for him because our names are quite similar. Uh, so far, it's got me a couple of free CDs and a pint. Um, well, I guess I'll take that. That's, there are worse things to have out of there. And uh, we have um, the third single from the album also came on a CD single here with the same remixes and the Tom Rowlands and the Chemical Brothers remix of Tutti Frutti that again slots inside your complete music singles uh, card sleeve there. The fourth single, the last one released from the album, came out around about June, July 2016. Uh, and there's a couple of fantastic mixes there. Uh, it is uh, People on the High Line, um, which I think that it now forms the basis of New Order's Christmas cards, that design. Um, the 12 inch features a Clapton remix of People on the High Line and the extended mix of it. Uh, there is a CD single that again features a whole bunch of uh, third party remixes Richard X, LNTG, Planet Funk, Hybrid, and another remix by Hybrid on there. Again, opened ripped, turned into my computer, stuck into the box set, promptly forgotten about. Uh, one of the one of the great little things that came out, and this had a manufacturing delays, is the People on the High Line 7 inch picture disc. Um, this came out months after the other versions by the way. Uh, this features uh, the Clapton radio in it and the Richard X video mix. I have never opened it, I've never listened to it, uh, I've never felt the need to um, it's just a really lovely, fantastic package. Look at that. That's the type of record you'd stick on a wall as a work of art. It's, uh, the design, the graphic design at this point is absolutely stellar. Now, there is um, one extra version, or one extra single, which came out. This came out a number of years later. Uh, for those of you that are particularly spotty, i.e. me, you'll go, what? That's this. It's the only seven inch released from the Music Complete period. This is Mark Reader's Academics mix of... Uh, academic which is on a clear vinyl seven inch uh, the b-side is uh, a track by mark reader uh, it came with uh, electronic sound magazine um, that do special limited edition seven inch singles on the front of some of their their, their issues um, it's a, a gorgeous little thing it's probably hard to get and the mark reader academic remixes are available on the digital music complete remixes uh, download package which um, i do have because i buy everything um, so that is a, a rarity academic is not by any standard the best new order track uh, from the album they released a live album in 2017 uh, and here it is it's called nomc 15 new order music complete 15 and, and you could get uh, initial pressings from pledge music uh, where you could order the CD and the, the vinyl. It's a triple album recorded at the Brixton Academy on the 17th of no, November 2015. Um, and, and it features the whole show. Um, and it includes, I think, every disc on it. I think this is clear vinyl. And let's quickly check. I think it is. Yeah, so the, so the version from Pledge Music is, is clear vinyl there. Um, if you're on a budget, completely understand if you are uh, the best version to get is this double cd which is here i'll be about 11 pounds i don't know how much the vinyl is these days probably quite expensive um, and it's got the whole set from the show i think i saw them i think this was the second show at brixton so i did a lot of shows in november 2015 new auto were touring suede were touring um, u2 were touring I saw left field as well uh, I, I think i think i did something like 42 shows in 44 days i was like duff man uh, in one of those episodes of the simpsons when he takes home to one side and going i'm so very tired uh, so this was one of the shows where i wasn't down the front jumping up and down but it was it was a great show actually really enjoyed it um, as i said you order became a very dependable very reliable 
live proposition at this point. Um, so NOMC 15 is live at Brixton Academy 2015. Again, at this point, the band haven't released an official live DVD, but this is the uh, the third live album that they've released with this lineup in four years. And as I've said, the CD version is just like the vinyl, but smaller. And silver instead of clear. It's got the same design. It's got the same kind of layout and everything that goes with it. And uh, it sounds fantastic. It reminds me of seeing New Order, which is probably what a live album should do. It should be a memory in a box really, that allows you to, to remember everything that you experienced. Um, and summer 2016, as I said before, the band released Complete Music as a double CD. So these are the extended music, extended remixes of the Music Complete tracks that's from the, uh, the Music Complete box set there. And uh, they were on CD. Um, and, and, you know, it was great that they finally got a CD release for these. These extended 12-inch versions are gorgeous. They are proper, old-school, extended versions of the songs that allow all the different versions of the songs uh, to breathe and to explore their hidden depths. So all the little instrumental textures that are hidden deep inside the multi-tracks that you might only hear a fraction of when you listen to the album are all there. Um, it's it's really a really great extended version of an album the way in which I haven't really heard any other man do so it makes com it makes music complete into a double album well I do recommend it and then again of course I recommend everything you want to do because I think they're really bloody brilliant um, we also had a fairly limited release here um, called uh, music remixed and and this was a an unusual kind of fan project actually uh, which was pressed onto a silver CD I think there were a hundred of these um, and it was although it might not have been it might have been a CDR uh, and it was a remix by Fritz von Runt um, who remixed all the tracks from the album and presented them in new forms with new musical backing isolating the vocal from the existing versions of the tracks uh, really good actually I think difficult to get hard to get probably expensive these days um although you can find it there is a website that's listed on here neworderremix.com i'm not sure that's still available or this the tracks are still there but it is worth hearing it's a an interesting remix album that's a semi-official fan project i think it's fair to say there was another new order live album because hey why not so the band had become quite a fine-tuned uh, live concert machine at this point. Um, they released the Music Complete um, live at Brixton album in 2017, and around about the time that they did that, they, they debuted a, a new concert tour um, at the Manchester International Festival in June and July 2017, which they released as a, an album in 2018. Um, and it was called... Now, this is where it gets complicated... Uh, New Order plus Liam Gillick, Liam Gillick being uh, the mu musician, and it's called NO12KLG17MIF, which stands for New Order, 12 Keyboardists, Liam Gillick, and the set 2017 Manchester International Festival. Um, so the band played a series of shows um, where they had 12 keyboard players who joined the existing lineup of the group, and they... they uh, looked at their set list and they completely revitalised them. So that because they played just a small number of shows um, and they were playing in Manchester and they had 12 keyboardists, they decided to take a different approach to how they were going to play live. So these had some pretty exciting set lists, to be honest, some absolute geek catnip. So if you were seeing the order on these tours, by the way, uh, and that's, uh, that's the fourth disc, sorry, third disc, so let's go for number one, I think. Um, it started with, for example, this one is on uh, red vinyl. Uh, again, this is the Pledge Music version of the album. And so they brought back a lot of songs that they'd either never played or hadn't played in a very long time. So Times Change off Republic uh, was played live as an instrumental. Who's Joe off Waiting for the Sirens Call. Dream Attack came back for the first time in uh, 24 years. And Joy Division's Disorder came back. Ultraviolence for the first time in over 20 years. In a Lonely Place uh, for the first time since 1998, all day long for the first time since 1989. Um, and then also we had uh, Shell Shock for the first time since the 80s, 
Guilt is the useless emotion. Coming back to the set list for the first time in 10 years. Subculture for the first time since the 80s. Um, the biggest thing you had to hit was Bizarre Love Triangle in the set. Uh, you also had my favourite New Order song, Vanishing Point, at last, back in the sets. And Plastic as well from the album Music Complete. And then the final part of the set features uh, Decades, which again, the band said hadn't played since 1984. Elijah, which the band hadn't played uh, seen it for nearly 10 years. Heart and Soul, which the band hadn't played since 98. And Behind Closed Doors, which is the B-side to Crystal, getting its first live performances only 16 years after it was first released. Um, I didn't get to any of these shows, uh, which is a shame, but there weren't many of them. The venues were really small. They sold out very, very quickly. I had an opportunity to see them one weekend, and that was the weekend that I saw uh, New Order, or more correctly, that was the weekend that I saw U2 at Twickenham Stadium, uh, as well as doing a warm-up show on a Friday. So if I had the choice between seeing New Order play this and U2 playing a warm-up show to 50 people in Twickenham Stadium, I'm going to go and see U2, and I think you're going to understand that. Uh, you probably agree with me. Um, this is So this uh, was released as a triple album, uh, coloured vinyl version through Pledge Music, uh, came with a booklet, there was also a documentary uh, that was directed I think by a guy called Mike Christie, uh, that documentary was on Sky Arts and the uh, the booklet that goes with the album has uh, you know, photos of rehearsals and stage designs so effectively you're getting a unique 17 person lineup of New Order uh, where they have 12 keyboardists that are playing live and extended versions of it. Now, in the, the show, each one of the 12 keyboardists was effectively in a box. The box opened when they played, so you could see them playing. And when the, they weren't playing, the box closed. There's a very interesting visual identity. The band played a, a number of extra shows around this, I think, in Turin and uh, I think one other city in 2018. Again, um, I had the opportunity to go to those. Uh, but 2018, when this show was happening in Turin and elsewhere, um, again, U2 were on tour, Slayer were on tour, Twilight Sad were on tour, and I went to something like 35 shows in 38 days. Uh, and that, I didn't realise at the time, was going to be more shows, um, well, four times more shows than I went to in the whole of 2020, uh, for example. Pretty bonkers, all things considered. Again, another fantastic, solid New Order live album. Um, really good. Nice way of shaking up the set list. Again, unless you're a vinyl fiend, go for the CD version uh, that's both cheaper, smaller, and uh, more affordable. It takes less shelf space. Elegantly packaged. Um, so we have two things that come up next. Um, we're going to go by order of performance. I think it's probably the best thing to do. So the, the last time I saw New Order... Um, before I saw them at the O2 in November 2021, was this show, uh, Entertainment, Education, sorry, Education, Entertainment and Recreation, live at the Alexandra Palace on, I think, the 9th of November 2018. Friday night, very busy. That week I saw U2 in Dublin twice. I saw New Order. I saw, uh, again, I saw U2 in uh, Berlin. And then I promptly kind of fell asleep for a very long time indeed. Um, the box set, this was released as a live album. There's a live film inside various versions of it. I bought the fancy schmancy box set because I could. Let's, uh, let's have a look inside the box set for this and see what it is. The first thing I will say about it is, uh, in my opinion, it's probably the worst New Order live album from the current lineup. Bernard's got a cold and you can hear it in his voice. Um, so this is the, uh, the, the special version that you could only get through the band's website. Uh, this one is uh, clear vinyl here, um, disc one, disc two, probably clear as well actually, although to be fair I haven't looked at it for a while yet, that one's clear vinyl as well, disc three, let's take it as red that that one's clear vinyl too, and again each one of the photographs on the back is kind of like a distorted blurred image from the screenshots that we've got in the uh, in the show. The, uh, the version uh, the, the box set version comes with some, some 12 inch prints, uh, blurred versions of band members taken from video footage. That looks really like Jillian actually, I think. Uh, not sure which one that is. That 
Pat Bernard, recognise it by the red guitar. Uh, that one, that's I think that's Tom. I could be wrong though. Just squeeze my hands and go like that. Um, again, who would frame these? I don't know. Um, and I, I, I must be blunt. I think this version of the set is a ripoff. It's very expensive for what it is, and uh, yes, I bought it. But I think if I'd had a chance to see it before I bought it, I might have stuck with a different version of it. There's also a, a book that comes in there that has photographs taken from the show, uh, but it's largely photographs of video screens. Um, there's very little in the way of explanatory text. Whilst it's a very, very nice and well-designed Peter Savile book, and it's not got much in the way of, way of readability or re-readability or revisiting around there. Uh, and then the thing which is probably most interesting are these three discs. So you've got CD1, CD2, and you've got a Blu-ray of the show. And the frustrating thing is the Blu-ray of the show contains one extra song that's not on the vinyl or the CD, and that is Tutti Frutti. Uh, but it is the first DVD visual Blu-ray release um, of New Order with Tom Chapman. So it's the first officially shot film of the band that's been released um, with this lineup. So the first official New Order concert video since Glasgow 2006. Uh, not taken into account, of course, this well dodgy bootleg here. Um, and it, it, that means that it's got singularity, regret, love vigilantes, uh, ultraviolence and disorder making an appearance from the, uh, the, the Manchester show, Crystal, Academic, uh, Your Silent Face, Tutti Frutti, Subculture, Bizarre Love Triangle into Vanishing Point, Oh, beautiful moment that. Uh, waiting for the Sirens Call, Plastic, The Perfect Kiss, True Faith, Blue Monday, Temptation, and then the inevitable Joy Division karaoke section at the end, which is Atmosphere, Decades, and Love Will Tear Us Apart. Um, I left as they started Love Will Tear Us Apart. But I wanted to get a run on the crowds. I wanted to get out before 10,000 other people uh, made a run for it. Alexandra Palace is, in my opinion, a crap venue in a difficult to reach part of London um, it takes a long time to get there a long time to get back the trains aren't very often the venue is huge and it's a long way from the train station or for example the bus station so Alexandra Palace is probably my least favourite venue in London um, I think all things considered uh, so it's better to watch it on Blu-ray I think than, than go to the show I go there if a band plays there but if I had a choice between going there and I don't know Brixton or anywhere, I would probably go anywhere. So that's um, Education, Entertainment and Recreation, the New Order Live album recorded in 2018. As I've said, I think Bernard's got a cold uh, on this album, and I don't think his vocals are particularly good. They're my, my least favourite uh, Bernard Live vocals uh, that I've ever heard, actually. Uh, even not quite as good as the Glastonbury 1987 show, let alone any of the others. Um, so, a bit of a shame. Um, they are much better live, and this release particularly uh, kind of makes you think. Um, there was one final release, which came out this year, 2021. Now, although last year, actually, released in 2020 last year, was the 12-inch single on a new non-album track, uh, Be A Rebel, uh, which was finalised... Uh, it, I mean, it was recorded during the, um, the the period that became Music Complete, uh, but left off the album. There's a grey vinyl 12-inch here. This features Bernard's uh, remix and Stephen's T34 mix, so remixes by Bernard and Stephen. And on the A side, it's got... Uh, the standard version and uh, a remix by Bernard as well. There were lots of remixes of this track that were available. The only physical release in 2020 was the 12 inch single. Um, and so, yeah, I listened to that. It's a good track, it's a great single. Sounds like exactly the middle ground between Electronic and New Order, actually. Um, and then there was a, a set of remixes that were released in 2021. Uh, came on a double 12 inch here. Uh, this double 12 inch. I'm going to guess this is clear, although I haven't looked for a while because New Order really like their clear vinyl releases. Yes, it's clear. Well, that's surprising, isn't it? Uh, and again, that's a whole bunch of remixes of Beer Rebel, and they're pretty good remixes, but you know, you don't need them. New Order are very good at remixes. They're one of the most remixed bands on the history of the planet. They make Depeche Mode look like slackers and amateurs when it comes to remixes. But it did get a 13-track CD single release. Here it is, the uh, the CD release 
of Be A Rebel. Uh, and it features every mix of the track off all the 12 inches on a CD single here. Uh, with the picture of uh, birds committing, I think they're called murmurations, I think, when birds fly in uh, formation. And that is where the New Order story comes to a close. Uh, Music Complete is, in my opinion, a really good New Order album. It's certainly better than, than any band uh, at their age towards the end of their career would be hoping to get. Around about this point, bands like R.E.M. would have been sputtering through things like Around the Sun, um, and, uh, you know, Black Sabbath would have been making probably Tur or something like that. You know, where, where bands' albums towards the end of their run are generally pretty crappy, unless the band is amazing. Um, a New Order uh, really surprised, I think, a lot of doubters that thought they couldn't do it without Peter Hook and thought that everything they were going to do was going to be crap. Because when you start predicting the future, what happens when the future arrives and you start becoming the sound of the present and then you start becoming the sound of the past? Well, if you're New Order, you make an album as good as Music Complete. It's the best New Order album, in my opinion, since Technique. It's fantastic. I love it to bits. And that brings my story of talking through all the New Order albums uh, to a close. Um, sorry it's taken so long. Thank you uh, for making it this far, and I will see you all soon. Stay beautiful. Bye.